Bravo, bravo, bravo. Charleston White gave an A-class fucking logical lesson to Cam Newton. Cam Newton was scrambling like Mike Vick in the pocket. That was amazing to watch. I was riveted for three hours. I couldn't I couldn't stop listening. Because what it looked like, it, it looked like Cam did zero research or watch any of Charles and White's content because he appeared so shocked and so discombobulated at the answers that Charleston was giving. And like anybody who follows Charleston for any amount of time realizes, yo, this is just basic Charlton. Like this is this is not new. This is not some out of crazy pot. He wasn't just turned off the camera. This is how he's always talked. He's been talking like this for damn near a decade. If you go back and watch his fucking Facebook videos, he's always been an outspoken, loud mouth dude that has strong opinions and has a pretty good principle and ethics by which he goes by life. Like he stands on his principle. Like he said, I'm willing to die or kill over the things that come over my mouth. And Cam didn't know what to do with it. Cam was trying to fucking get an emotional. He, he couldn't get off his feelings. He was talking about, I'll, I'll fight you. And then Charles was like, bro, dude, I'll just end up shooting you. Like, somebody got to die. And that was one of the funniest parts of the thing where he says, man, yeah, I'll slap my bitch. And I, I cried laughing because Cam was like, bro, if I ever saw you, he's like, bro, don't do it. And Cam, and here's the thing. Charles gave him some good advice. He was giving him a lesson, a real manhood lesson. And I think Cam actually changed a little bit if you get towards the end of the video. But the furthermore to go about it was like the logical assault that Charleston gave. He had an answer for everything Cam had to offer. And Cam played a very good protagonist role. Be the other side. Now, I don't know if he did it on purpose. He kind of lied and said he did it for entertainment purposes. Nah, I was reading body language and tone and the way he was looking. And he was fucking pissed. He was emotional. He was sour. He 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 got outclassed. He got outclassed. And this is one of the things you kind of learn with athletes. Cam's ego was so huge, so huge. And Charleston treated him like just a regular ass dude. Like, bro, you're just a guy. Fuck all that fucking Superman shit that you were a, a, a quarterback in the NFL. It doesn't matter. We're talking man to man. Like, all that shit goes out the window. And what you realize is a lot of, like, Cam Newton's guests, they're intimidated or they're starstruck because they're like, oh, I'm talking to Cam Newton. But, like, one of the things that was interesting is there was zero of that, like, behavior from Charleston. Charleston stuck on his fucking square and said, look, man, it is what it is. If you really got a problem with it, man, we can, we, I, listen, you can come die over it or you can go to jail. Which one you want to do? Because I will sue you. And that was one of the funniest things because Cam was trying to play gangster. And it, it, Charles is like, bro, I know real gangsters, real killers, real niggas who really do real shit out here. And, bro, you ain't scaring me with this fucking, oh, gangster act. I'm big. I'm 6'4", and there's going to be a problem. He's like, bro, there ain't going to be no problem because you're getting shot. And if I don't die, I'm suing you. So which one you want to do? And Cam was, like, sitting there, like, just steaming. And he really had a problem with the Dion thing because he felt he's kind of like Dion. Deion Sanders, like, what, like one of the things that was very interesting about the way that Charleston was talking about was he said he's not necessarily mad at Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders did what most people would do. Well, not what most people would do, but Deion did what was in the best interest of his kids and his family. He did not give a fuck about the damn kids at Jackson State. The Jackson State kids were irrelevant. And what he was stating is the, the very obvious. He came in with the star power. Dion was a star. Everybody was like, oh, Dion, he's a new flash thing. But when it actually come down to the actual coaching and the actual, like, playing the games, he's getting his ass kicked. Left and right, left and right, getting his ass kicked all over the place. And now you don't see the rappers. You don't see the same support because he's not winning. And what Charleston's trying to explain is he's like, look, he did all that to fucking put his kids in the best position to get drafted. That's what this whole thing was about. That's all it was ever about. And he tried to use the black community. And he said, I'm mad at the black community because they supported the bullshit. They supported the shit. What about Jackson State? What about those kids? He's like, I got actual color phones while I'm talking to the kids that feel betrayed. They got sold a bad bill of goods. And Deion Scamper got the fuck up out of there. And then even when he went to Colorado, he got rid of a bunch of white kids and tried to bring in an all-black team in a primarily white school. And all he was doing is he's speaking bars at the bars. These are things you can't refute. And Cam kept trying to fucking change the goalposts, kept trying to be emotional, kept trying to change. Don't call him no bitch. Don't call him. Don't say fuck him. Blah, blah, blah. And he's like, nah, fuck it. I would say it right to his face. And Charles is right. He would say it to his face. And like Cam kept trying to use intimidation and started to realize, no, you can't intimidate every man. There's some men out there that stand on moral principles and what they believe what they're saying. 
And that was very foreign to Cam. And it also reveals a lot about Cam, like, probably in the locker room and who he was, like, on a team. Because physically, he's fucking, uh, he's amazing. There, there, there's probably never been a specimen like Cam Newton in the NFL as a quarterback ever. Probably never will be. Fast, strong, big, the size of a linebacker, can run like a receiver. But up here, he's still a child. And that's probably why he had limited success in the NFL. Now, I'm not saying he was like a bum or he was trash in the NFL. But for the gifts that he was given, you would think this guy would be an all-time great. And he was good. Don't get me wrong. Cam was very good as a quarterback. But he did not supersede the expectations of what was expected of him uh, coming in. Number one drive pick, like this this physical specimen. And you could tell it's up here mentally. His leadership, his ability to think logically is not up there. He doesn't have the same mindset of, a, like, a, say, a Aaron Rodgers or even a Russell Wilson or a Dante Culpepper. Any of these quarterbacks that have really good minds. His mind is not there. His leadership quality there. And you can see why it was very difficult for the franchise to find long-term success because his leadership quality. And when men are looking at you as the leader, because he he was pretty much coordinated as the leader for Carolina, they see why he was not that good of a leader. His ego is out of whack. He was not as humble as he could have been. And it also makes sense why like his second stint in Carolina didn't play out in his stint in the um, – Patriots didn't play out and why he was never able to get back in the league. It's nothing physically. He could probably still do it physically. It's up here. His humbleness, his his ego, too far out of whack. And Charleston was able to break that down and really display where Cam is kind of limited at. Because Cam couldn't get over some of the things he was saying. These are just words. And like what Charleston was saying, you're, you're getting hung up on the words and not looking at the action. You're just like most black people. Most black people get caught up on the words and don't get caught up on what the man is doing. Fuck what he says. What is he doing? And see, that's a big problem with the black community. He demonstrated perfectly with that at the highest level that, hey, look, black people, we got to start looking. Because I'm like, Cam, when you start talking, you say, oh, Oxy, like uh, he asked him, Charleston White, what do you, what's the one word about you say? He said, Oxymoron. And Cam disrespect him said, well, you could take out the Oxy and just leave it at Moron. And Charleston played it cool. He's like, hey, okay. You call me a moron. He's like, but I'm an oxymoron because you like me, but you hate what's coming out because it's the truth. It hurts. And that's the truth about the That's the real truth about the truth that it's painful. Most people can't take it. It's too fucking. Ugh. It hurts, especially when it hits you in a personal spot. And that's what happens to a lot of guys. A lot of guys get hit with the truth and it, they, they try to deflect and try to get out the way and try to hide. Listen, manhood, you can't hide from anything. And that's what Charleston was trying to say. You trying to build me as a celebrity. I ain't no celebrity. I'm just a dude. He's like, the same way I was talking was the same way I was talking when I was a broke, struggling dad working as a youth advocate. I didn't come from money. I didn't have no vehicle like football. I got this the hard way. He's like, the reason people like listening to me is because the conversation I'm bringing. And Cam just kept hating. Hating the dude. He, the, the, the hate that Cam was throwing his way. Because he had me already asked him a question about Beyonce. He said, hey, you leave me in a room with Beyonce for two weeks. Uh, that's my girl. And Cam's like, well, why would you ever be in the uh, room with Beyonce for two weeks? He's like, that's not the question you asked. He said, like, you asked me, could I get Beyonce? I told you, yeah, if I'm in the room with Beyonce for two weeks, I can get her. He's like, but I'm not trying to do that. Said, that's a married woman. But he says, any woman, leave her in the room with two weeks, I'll be able to get her. And I'm laughing at it because that's how I'll be feeling too. Hey, you leave me if you leave me with a room with any woman for two weeks, nigga, that's going to be my girl. She's going to fall in love. The conversation. And that's what a lot of guys are failing at is they don't understand conversation rules the nation. Your ability to speak and convey a message clearly and concisely is what get people to listen. And when you can get people to listen, you can get them in your in their minds. You can change people because conversation rules the nation. The conversation people has dictates how you're going to be successful in life, where you're going to go in life. And most people can't understand that concept. And Cam kept getting hung up on words instead of actually looking at the action. He called him a snitch. And once again, Charleston said, look, there's no paperwork for me being a snitch. I ain't never did no time. There's no paperwork behind any of this stuff. I'm a youth advocate. I've been working at the highest levels from the White House down to the fucking schools. I know what I'm talking about. I've been with the youth. I've been in the trenches. I know what I'm talking about. I've been a struggling father. I've been broke. I've been rich. I understand. I understand the common folk. I'm with the common folk. The common folks arrive with me because I speak for them. 
you football players, you you celebrities, you really think that you're larger than life, man. A nigga who has four kids, and he said a very hard line. A nigga who has four kids who's working a job, he don't got time to give a goddamn about no Deion Sanders. Fuck Deion Sanders. <laughs> That's how I be feeling too, nigga. I got work to do. I got things to do. I don't got time to be worrying about no Deion Sanders. <laughs> And that's what's funny about it because these football players, these these athletes, a lot of times their ego is so large and they're entitled because they made a lot of money and they are well known. But really, your contribution to society is you're, you're merely kind of just a clown. You're a highly skilled, specialized, well-paid clown or entertainer. Now, that's not a bad thing. Go get your money. Go get your bread. Football and sports teach a very important lesson, which is like character building. But what Charleston's trying to explain is the average American don't give a damn. You guys be trying to look down bottom. You guys look on from top and look down on the common man. The common man looking up at you. And sometimes we have this hero worship where they look at these guys and they hear the words. But what are you talking about? You ain't talking about nothing. And if you listen to most Cam Newton's podcasts, they really ain't talking about nothing. It, it, it's, it's merely just names and people being filmed. But when you really break down the conversation, that's why Charleston is bigger. Charleston said he does numbers. And, and then Cam tried to take credit for it. And he's like, nah, bro, it ain't you, bro. I gave you the numbers. I'm the guest. I'm the guy. I'm the star of the show. People want to hear me. That's what they're interested in. You just happen to have a platform. I came up here for free, get some exploitation. But I'm the one that they want to hear, which is, is true. And what was very fascinating, i like to conclude with this, was towards the end of the interview, Cam tried to fucking save face by saying, oh, I was just doing this all for entertainment, but I would really ask you a request. Can you help me with trying to help out the young people, help out the youth? And he he humbled himself as best as he could. It was not a very good humble um, like ask because he still tried to blow himself up, make himself look bigger. And Charles was like, you know what? I'll do it for the kids. I ain't doing it for you, but I'm doing it for the kids. Because he asked, can you help me write some curriculum and things like this to help for my program? And he started name dropping players. Like, Charles didn't know who these guys are. Charles has no idea who these football players are. I don't even know who these football players are. But it was interesting to see Cam kind of realize, actually, I'm talking to a real man. And he had some. Re- he, he garnered some respect for him. All the bullshit he was talking, when it got to the end of the day, when it got to the final fucking minutes and he started to realize and he opened his eyes a little bit and started to really because that's probably the first time Cam got talked to like that, from, especially from a small, disabled man or well, not disabled, but handicapped man. He opened his eyes and said, wow, I'm not as big as I think I am. I'm not that guy that I try to portray. I'm just a human being, just like anybody else walking this fucking planet. And that was very enlightening. That was very touching because even though Cam's ego still out of whack. He still was able to humble himself enough to be like, hey, can I get your help, brother? Like, I'm out here struggling just like everybody else. Can I get your help? And Charleston, he wasn't. Yeah, man, if it's for the kids, if it's for a good cause, let's talk. Let's get to work. And that's a great lesson we can all learn from that video. If you get a chance, go watch that three-hour video. Amazing. Just riveting information, riveting content. All-time legacy builder for uh, Charleston. I'm excited to see where Charleston's like career goes because it, it was inspiring to me just as a regular dude trying to figure it out.